You've seen me selecting objects on pages throughout all the earlier movies, but let's take a moment to really look at the details of selecting objects, because there are some subtle and sometimes confusing aspects to this seemingly simple task. The basic tools to select objects on our page are, as you know, the Selection Tool, otherwise known as the Black Arrow Tool, and the White Arrow Direct Selection Tool. We can do almost everything we need with the Black Arrow Selection Tool, so let's start there. You know that you can select objects just by clicking on them, and you know you can select more than one object at a time by shift-clicking on More. You can also select objects by dragging over an area. I'm going to click out here on the pasteboard, and then I'll drag out a marquee over these objects. Anything that this marquee touches is selected. Now, in some cases, objects get a solid line with corner handles. But in other cases, selected objects get a dashed line. The dashed line means that these are groups of objects, and I'm going to be covering groups in a later chapter. I can select everything on my spread by pressing Command-A or Control-A on Windows. This selects all the objects on the spread, and you'll notice that some of these objects are colored red, and some are colored blue. These colors reflect what layer they're on, and Layers 2 is a subject that I'm going to be covering in a later chapter. Now, if you want to deselect everything on your page, you could click someplace where there's no objects, or you could press Command-Shift-A or Control-Shift-A on Windows. That's one you should definitely get into your hands. Just do it a few times and get used to it. It's a really handy one, that ability to deselect everything on your spread with one keyboard shortcut. Okay, now here's something that confuses a lot of InDesign users. If I click on this graphic in the lower right corner, it selects it, right? But what if what I was really trying to do was select what's behind that logo, a different image? Well, you can select through one object to an object behind it by holding down the Command key on the Mac or the Control key on Windows, and then clicking. I Command or Control clicked once, and it selected through that object to the next object down. That's that big group that takes up most of the right side of the page. I'll Command or Control click again, and it selects another object behind that, that image that runs along the bottom of the spread. Then I'll Command or Control click one more time, and it reselects that top object. That's because there's no more objects behind it. Okay, I've mentioned in earlier movies the ability to double-click to go inside an object. For example, if I click once on this graphic, it selects the frame. Double-click on it, and it selects the image inside the frame. Double-click again, and it goes back to selecting the frame. Same thing with text. If I double-click on this text frame over here, it goes inside that text frame by switching to the Type tool and placing the cursor right where I double-clicked. Now, in this case, I can't double-click to get out again because, of course, that'll just select a word. So instead, I hit the Escape key on my keyboard. The Escape key switches back to the Selection tool, and the frame is selected. That double-click trick also works for groups. I'll click over here in this black area, and I can see that I've selected a group. I'm not sure how many objects there are in that group, but I do know that I can go inside the group by double-clicking. Now, one object inside that group is selected. Then, when I want to go back and select the entire group again, I just double-click again, or I could press Escape. That works, too. I should point out that sometimes you can change objects on your page even without selecting them. For example, I have the Selection tool selected right now, and I'm going to roll over this image, and then I'm going to click and drag. You can see that actually moved the image inside the frame, even though I never selected the image or the frame. That's because I clicked and dragged on top of the Content Grabber. That's that little thing that looks like a bagel or a Lifesaver candy. It's sitting right in the middle of graphic frames. If you click and drag on that Content Grabber, it will move the image inside the frame, even without selecting it. And that's kind of a cool feature, but I have to tell you, it drives me crazy, because I'm always accidentally moving images when I don't mean to. So I'm going to undo that by pressing Command-Z or Control-Z on Windows, and I'm going to go turn off that Content Grabber. To do that, I'll go to the View menu, choose Extras, and then select Hide Content Grabber. Now when I move my selection tool over a graphic, I no longer see that little bagel and I can't accidentally move it. I could still move the image because, as I just mentioned, double-click chooses the image inside the frame, and then I could move it around. Then I could double-click to select the frame again, or the Escape key trick works as well. There we go. Now the other selection tool that you need to know about is the Direct Selection tool, the White Arrow tool. The White Arrow Direct Selection tool lets you select inside objects in a different way. In this case, I can choose a single point on a path. You see what happens when I hover over this frame? 
all the points on the path highlight, and now I can click and drag, and I'm just moving that one point on the frame. I can also move segments, that is, the lines between points. If I move my cursor on top of a segment like this, the cursor changes a little bit. That indicates that it's going to move the segment, not the points. I'll click and drag, and you'll see that that segment moves. Well, now that you've got the hang of selecting objects in your documents, let's explore how to format those objects, starting with how to assign a fill or a stroke color.